All righty. So we just passed the feast of uh, tabernacles, right? The week, uh, be the beginning of the week of the in gathering. Um, yesterday, our 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 this past day was the first day, right? And now we are about to go into um, our Sabbath, right? Our, our regular weekly Sabbath. So with that said, Sabbath peace. Sabbath. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast. It given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that are watching in on the camera. Uh, but no peace. What? Oh, go ahead. Tell me something else I don't know. Oh, excuse me. Come on up here. Here. I mean, here. You just take it. Goodness gracious. To the saints that couldn't make it and the saints watching in on the darn camera. But no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is what? I don't know what come after that. Look at that. Now you, you missed the, the most important part. You got stage fright. What is it, Zakai? That they might give. Give. Boy, that's how you do it. <laughs> May Allah, please, please be careful around this cord. Don't bump the cord, okay? And shh. All righty. So let's talk about the, uh, the... Well, I don't know why I keep saying that. My Wi-Fi is connected. But um, let's... What? You said what? Nothing. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 23. Leviticus chapter 23. What I want, T? Uh, verse... Let me see what could be happening. Yeah, no, Wi Fi look good. Everything look good. You want 34. Huh? 34. All right, this is uh, Leviticus chapter 23. Give me verse 34. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 34. Brother brother, brother Daniel got the knees out. You know what I'm saying? He got the kneecaps out over here. You know what I'm You distracting me. You know what I'm talking about? I'm over here trying to preach the word, boy. You know what I'm talking about? Boy over here looking good. You know what I'm talking about? Can't be coming out here with the legs out. <laughs> This is uh, Leviticus chapter 23, verse 34. You know, my man just got that new job, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. It looked like money, too, boy. You know what I'm saying? That boy got the bandana shirt on. You know what I'm saying? He look like a rebel out here, boy. I, I, I see it. I'm coming through there to see you, too. Hey, come by, man. I'm going to come by and see you. <laughs> so this is uh, Leviticus chapter 23, verse 34. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be a feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. Look, he said, the fifteenth day of the seventh month. The seventh month, the name of that month is called Ethanim, according to our scripture, right? And that's the seventh month for us, right? So we already have, have began the month with the day of trumpets. Ten days later on the tenth day is the day of atonement, which was last weekend for us. And now we deal on the 15th day, uh, which was earlier today, right? That is the day of ingathering or the day of tabernacles, the first day of tabernacles. And then we count seven days from there. Let's keep going. Yeah. It shall be a feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. On the uh -huh. day... On the first day shall be a holy convocation. He shall do no servile work therein. Right? So on the first day, we aren't to work. There's no servile work. Right? And according to our calendar, it's always going to land right before the Sabbath. Right? So that, that goes two days of no work. 
right? The Sabbath is 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 the the true no work. Then the um, the high Sabbath or the first day of uh, of in gathering is going to be no servile work. The difference is servile work is going to be you know uh, like working for somebody or working for yourself for money, right? Sabbath is no labor at all, right? Don't do nothing. You know what I'm saying? So no servile work. Keep going. Seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you. You shall mm -hmm. offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is the soul mm -hmm. of the assembly. And you shall do no servile work there. These are the feasts of Yahuwah, which you shall claim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, and a burnt offering, and a meat offering, a sacrifice, a drink offering, and everything upon this day. Besides the Sabbaths of Yahuwah, and besides your gifts, and beside all your vows, and beside all your free will offerings, which you give unto the Yahuwah, also on the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep the feast of the Lord seven days. The first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. Right? So you notice what he said. Seven days, the first day will be a Sabbath, and then he said what after that? The, the eighth day will be a Sabbath, right? So this is why um, in, in the New Testament, when we read about this, the eighth day is called that great day, right? In the gospel, when they talk about it, it says that great day, because the Most High God separated it here. He said, count seven days, right? But then after that, he said, but on the eighth day, that's also a Sabbath for us, right? So that eighth day will land us on next Friday, right? So next Friday, we're going to get together again. Um, in between there, we're going to try to have two two studies, uh, two extra studies. Uh, me, me and Brother T, you know, he a diva now that he went to, to, to Dallas. So, you know, we got to try to work around this schedule, try to figure that thing out. You know what I mean? But uh, we're going uh, <laughs> to try to get some studies going. And then uh, we're going to talk about we, we already covered marriage a little bit. So we got to do probably one or two more uh, uh, parts of marriage. Um, and then eventually. We got to get back to our regular schedule programming, right? We got to find out who the next king is for Judah. I can give you a little secret. It's King Hezekiah. Woo! There's a whole lot to talk about with King Hezekiah. But for right now, let's talk about... Yeah, I don't know why that's popping up. Why they keep popping up? But uh, for right now, let's, uh, let's, let's talk about uh, tabernacles a little bit more. So um, when we talk about tabernacles, this day came... Uh, because we were in the wilderness, right? So in the wilderness, we had a tent, we had tents. Um, even, even our, our tabernacle, our temple, right. Was in the version of a tent. Remember you had the priests, the Levites, they had to, uh, work together, the Levites rather, they had to work together and put the, um, they almost like big old blankets, right? <laughs> big old blankets, stack them up on poles and they stand up literally a tent and they got layers of blankets on top of the tent. And that's where we went in to see God, right? So everything was in the tent, even the most high God was in the tent. And so that was kind of how we uh we're in the wilderness. So this is this is intended to memorialize that time for us, but then also this day testifies of Yahushua. So let's kind of talk through all of it. Let's go to Numbers chapter one real quick. This is Numbers chapter one. Uh, uh for those just tuning in, oh, I am not a deacon. Uh, Sister Pamela said, I got an epic. Just a little bit. Let me see. Is it still an echo now? Testing? Yeah, a little bit. I can hear myself. You can hear it? Yeah. All right, let me turn it down there. It's still an echo now. Check it now. Tested. Yep. Really? Yeah, I don't know. All right, try it now. 
Testing. Testing. A little bit. It's faint. Try it again. Testing. Okay, that's better. All right. All right, y'all got to be quiet because I have to turn him down a little bit. Okay, let's go. This is Numbers chapter 1. Give me okay. verse 48. For Yahuwah has spoken unto Moses, saying, Only thou shalt not number the tribe of Levi, neither take the sum of them among the children of Israel. But thou mm -hmm. shalt appoint the Levites over the tabernacle of testimony, and over the vessels thereof, and over all the things that belong to it. They shall bear the tabernacle and all the vessels thereof, and they shall minister un unto it, and shall encamp round about the tabernacle. And when the tabernacle sets towards the Levites, the Levites shall take it down. Right? So the Levites had to take the tabernacle down. The so this is a temporary building that they had to set up, build it, and then it was their job. When it's time to roll, when that cloud gets to moving, it's like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, take it down. Let's go. It's time to go. Cloud moving. You got to imagine it. We are sitting there, right? We sitting there worshiping the most high God, sitting there, you know, playing around, joking with each other, eating, doing whatever we're doing, right? All of a sudden, we see the shade moving a little bit, right? It's a little bit of shade. And all of a sudden, it starts moving a little bit. And it's like, everybody look up. Like, oh, Moses, the cloud moving. Moses get up and like, all right, let's go. Y'all know what to do. The Levites still got to know their job. They got to go break this thing down real quick. They break it down. They take the staves. They take the, the, the poles. They take everything that's holding it up. They fold up the blankets. They get the artifacts. They got to carry it in a very particular way, right? And then they start moving. We all start moving in unison, right? So this was temporary. Then the next spot where the clouds stop or where the fire stop, we go, and then we set everything back up. Right. And we might hang out there for a couple days. Then the cloud move again. Guess what? Let's go. Got a time to move. So we, we break it down. So this is all temporary for us. Right. Keep going. When the tabernacle sets forward, the Levites shall take it down. And when the tabernacle is to be pitched, the Levites shall set it up. And the stranger that comes near shall be put to death. And the right. So anybody who come near it. When they say stranger, they're not talking about Gentiles here. When they say stranger, it's saying anybody who's not a, and a, a Levite, the, the type of Levite to touch this, your butt going to be put to death. Right? Keep going. It's very serious. If the children of Israel shall pitch their tents, every man by his own camp and every man by his own standard throughout their Right? Life. Children of Israel going to pitch what? Their tent. Right? That's what Tabernacle is talking about. Tents. Right? So we would pitch our tents, every man, by his own standard. In other words, in it by his own tribe. So if I'm from if I'm from the tribe of uh, give me a tribe. If I'm from the tribe of Asher, then guess what? When I pitch my tent, it need to be in the section that's given to Asher. Right? Keep going. But the Levites shall pitch round about the tabernacle of testimony, that there be no wrath upon the congregation of the children of Israel. And right. Shall keep the so look, this is the grace of the most high God. He just told you any stranger that comes near it shall be put to death. When he say stranger, he's talking about anybody who's not a Levite. He said, y'all set up y'all tent because God know how we're going to work. We're going to be like, oh, that tabernacle got a lot of nice stuff in it. It's really nice in there. Now give me a good view. We know we black folks always want the good view, right? We always want to say, oh, give me a good view. Set up our tent over there. Right. So he knew what we were going to do. We were going to try to set up the tent as close as we could to the tabernacle. And then at some point, somebody was going to make a darn mistake, trip, fall, try to sneak in. One of your little babies going to go in there. Something going to happen and somebody going to have to be put to death. So what the most high God did, is he told you, no, you put your tent wherever your standard is. In other words, wherever your tribe is. Don't just put your tent willy nilly wherever you want. Put it where your tribe is. Then on top of that, he'd think about it like, you know what? That ain't enough, though. Okay, Levites. Technically, y'all are my tribe. Y'all ain't got no tribe. Y'all put y'all tents around the tabernacle. What does that do? That causes a barrier. Right? Because now when the folks want to set up their tent, they're going to have to look at the Levites, and the Levites going to catch them before God do. So he, they set up their tents as a barrier around the tabernacle. 
all the Levites, right? Keep going. Watch this. And the children of Israel and the Levites shall keep charge of the tabernacle of testimony. Mm -hmm. The children of Israel did according to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so did they. Right? Now, hold with, uh, well, you don't have to hold it. Let's go to Philippians chapter 2. This is Philippians chapter 2. Give me verse. Give me verse 9. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. This is Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. Oh, I'm drawing a blank here. You found it? Yeah. Wherefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That's verse nine. Yeah. Uh, jump down, maybe verse 15. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the, in the world. Holding forth the world of life that I may rejoice in the day of the Messiah that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Uh-huh, watch this. Yea, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice in service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. For the same cause also do ye joy and rejoice with me. But I trust in Yahuwah, I trust in the Master, Yahushua, to send Timothy shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. For I have mm -hmm. no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are of the Yahshua Messiah. But ye know the proof of him, that as a son with the father, he has served with me in the gospel. Uh -huh. Therefore I hope to sin presently as soon as I shall see how it will go with me. But I trust in the Lord that I also myself shall come shortly. Yet I suppose it necessary to send to you Epaphrodius, my brother and companion in labor and fellow mm -hmm. soldier, but your messenger and he that ministered to my wants. For he longed after you and I was full of heaviness because that ye had heard that he had been sick. For indeed he was sick nigh unto death, but God had mercy to him and not on him only, but on me also that I should have sorrow upon sorrow. All right. So he's sick nigh unto death, but y'all had mercy on him. Right. So he's dealing with things and Paul thought he was going to die. Look at his attitude with this. Keep going. Watch this. I send him, therefore, the more carefully that when you see him again, you may rejoice and that I may be the less sorrowful. Receive him, therefore, in the Lord with all gladness and hold such a reputation in reputation. Because for. Go to, no, we got our. Yeah, we might come back, but go to um, uh, John chapter 12. Verse 52. What's the last what's the last verse in John? It is Give me 32. 50. All right. John and chapter 12, verse 32. And if I be lifted, if I be lifted up from the earth, mm -hmm. they are all men unto me. The earth will right. He said, Look, when I get lifted up on the earth, all men gonna come to me. You saw Paul talking about his friend, his friend about to deal with death. Right? Paul's attitude was like, listen, he almost died. When I send them to y'all, I hope y'all rejoice that he's still here, right? Watch this. This is uh, Yahushua. He's talking about his death. He said, when I get lifted up, it's going to draw everybody to me. 
Right? Watch this. This he said, signifying what death he should die. The people answered him, we have heard out of the law that the Messiah abides forever. And how do Right? You so look, they said, listen, we've been kind of paying attention to what the law and the prophets say. And the way we understand it is the Messiah lives forever. Right? It's similar. Listen, these theories are similar to the theories that we have about the end of the world or the last days and all that. Right? They kind of look into it, trying to figure out how this thing going to play out. Right? How's it going to play out? Like, is Russia going to attack North Korea, start World War III, and then all the Arabians is going to rise up? Like, we come up with all these different theories. How's, how's it going to play out? And then you have a brother that come by and be like, no, 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 brother, you have to understand. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to be North Korea. It's going to be such and such. I've heard it from the law. I've heard it from the prophets. So that's what they're looking at. They're looking like, no, no, no. So listen, based off of our understanding, whoever end up being this Messiah is going to live forever. Right? Keep going. Watch this. They had that right, by the way, obviously. Right? Yeah. Watch this. We have heard out of the law that the Messiah abides forever. And how sayest thou, the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is right? That man? doesn't make sense. This is, this is why I tell all of us, right? Do not get too committed to our theories. Because we going to think of it, even if it's a right theory, we going to think of it playing out one way. And the Most High God never going to let it play out. I wouldn't expect that Most High God to ever let it play out exactly how you think. it. That's not his glory at that point. You can walk around. Satan can come. If Most High God gave you that understanding, right, of exactly how it's going to play out. Satan can come easily moments after and be like, yo, you figured that out on your own. And then you turn around and be like, I am the Most High God. Like that one guy that's in Demona. My name is Yahuwah Ben Yahuwah. You call yourself Yahuwah, son of Yahuwah? Are you nuts? Right? But that's what happens. I'm sure the brother actually has some information. The brother probably has some revelation. And at that point, he started looking at it like, you know what? I am the son of God. You know what I'm saying? No, no, no. The son of God, not a son of God. That's me. I might just go die on the cross. Right? It's like in his mind, I'm him. That's dangerous for us, right? So we gotta keep our minds open, just be like, let's let's kind of let this thing happen. Cause in their mind, they're looking like, well, I know what my book say. It say that the Messiah is gonna live forever. So when you tell me that you gonna die and you the Messiah, I ain't believing you no more. Right. So now the scripture has become a stumbling block to us. Right. All because it's about predicting for us. Instead, what would we have told? Hold, hold we have right here. Go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter. What I want? 13 or 14 or 13 or 18. Uh, Give me Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse one. Yeah. It's Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse one. We have to understand why prophecy is here is not here for us to predict. Right. That's not the intention of the most high God. He, you, you'll never read anywhere. Hey, I gave you this prophecy so so that you can tell everybody this is how it's going to play out. No, he tell you, I gave it to you so that, you know, I am God who knows it from the beginning. How it's going to end. That's it. It's all for his glory. They ain't got nothing to do with you. This is Deuteronomy chapter 18. Give me verse uh, one. The priests, the Levites, and all the tribe of Levi shall have no part nor inheritance with Israel. They shall eat the offering. That's Deuteronomy 18? Yeah. What I want? Jump down. What I want? A little, little further down or something? Verse 15. 15? Do I want 15? You, want, you can have 18, 18, or you can start at 15. I don't want either one of those. It's nothing before that? What Am I going crazy? What you looking oh, at? you know what? It's after it. Give me Deuteronomy 18 verse, what I want, 22? Give me Yay. after the Messiah. Was it 23? Mm, 22. 22? It's Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 22. I was thinking it was before. Wait, it's after. No, 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 no. Hold on. Deuteronomy 18 verse 
We'll just start from tw- 19. No, I don't want. I don't want 19. I want 20. I think I want 22. Okay, all right. When a prophet speaks in the name of Yahuwah, if the thing follow not nor come to pass, that is the thing which Yahuwah has not spoken. Right. So if you feel like somebody lying, right? If somebody pop up, if somebody pop up to us right now, say, "Listen, y'all, it's time to go to the wilderness." Right. We got to act. Okay, it's time to go to the wilderness. I hear you, bro. I hear you. Are you a prophet? And he's going to say, yeah, I'm a prophet. And I'm going to say, okay, well, show us, give us a sign to show us that you're a prophet. He's going to say, okay, you will know that I'm a prophet because Joe Biden and Donald Trump are going to get into a fist fight three days from now on Capitol Hill. Thus says Yahuwah, right? All we got to do is wait three days. We ain't got to move too quick. We got to wait three days. If this brother words don't come to pass, he's not a prophet. But if Joe Biden just deck Trump, bah, hit him right in the darn mouth, right? And Trump fall out, Trump my boy now. You know what I'm saying? It hurt my little heart. You know what I'm saying? But if Trump fall out, bah, you know what I'm saying? Hit the ground. I'll be like, I got that. You know what I'm saying? Hey, yo, wait for me. I'm coming to the wilderness too. I'm right behind them. That's all we got to do. So when they look at Yahushua, Yahushua is not giving them any specific commandment that has to be done right now. Yahushua is giving information like, yo, 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 X, Y, and Z. I'm the son of man. When I die, this is going to happen. That is the prophecy. When I die, it's going to draw all men to me. That is the prophecy. All you got to do is sit back and be like, all right, I'm going to wait for you to die then. You know what I'm saying? This dude talking, the big old talker. Guess what? I'm going to wait for him to die. Because everybody who did wait for him to die, what they do? What the centurion do? Surely this is the son of God. He said, surely this is the son of God. And he is kicking his butt up until he died. A little bit of that water hit him. Oh, no, something special just happened just now. My bad. This is, this is, it. This is it. No, the man was for real. It take it until you die. Right? It's temporary. Yahushua knew that. That's why he's telling them. He's trying to let him know, listen, listen, when I get lifted up, the whole world going to draw to me. The man looking like, no, nah, you supposed to live forever. He don't understand that Yahushua's body is temporary. It's just a tent. It's just a tabernacle. Paul understood that. He looking like, oh, man, most I God have mercy on him. He wasn't looking like it's the end of the world. He didn't like, well, I know y'all, y'all like the, the, the tent. So when I send them back to y'all, you know what I'm saying? Y'all should rejoice. This is temporary, though. Right? Keep going. That's the end of the chapter. I was in, uh, go to, uh, no, no, uh, sorry. Keep going in, in John chapter 12. Where we leave off? Verse 34. It's John chapter 12. Verse 30, 34, it should be like 35, 36. No, nah, we're in 34. It's John chapter 12, verse 34. The people answered him, we have heard out of the law the Messiah abides forever. How sayest thou the son of man must be lifted up? Who is this son of man? Then Yahshua said unto them, yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walks in darkness knows not where he's go, going. Why right? You so you have to understand that Yahushua nor Yah like almost, almost never answers a question directly. Right? However, the answer that you give, you're given is the answer that he need to give. Right? So he's saying, he asked the question like, hold on. We, we read about this prophecy of the Son of Man. We understand the Son of Man that's prophesied by Daniel to be the messiah we understand the messiah is going to live forever so then how are you telling us that you are the son of man and that when you die everybody going to be drawn to you they, they it just it's not they not they don't understand it's not enough information revealed yet right at this point it hasn't been revealed they sitting there like i'm trying to make uh, like with all probably with all good intentions trying to make sense of this right how do I, I, you, so you the son of, but the son of man live forever. 
But you the son of man, you, I don't believe you, bro. It just don't make sense. Any of us would be in that same position if we knew our scripture, right? We'd be looking at it like, no, nah, this thing is sorry. It just don't make sense. I understand. I understand all the rest of you people think you it. But I'm telling you, it's just it's not lining up for me. Right? It don't add up for me. Let's see what he say next. But oh, uh, read that again where y'all should have responded with. Yet a little while is the light with you. He All said, only a little while. while is the light with you. In other words, the way for this to make sense is only going to be with you a little while. Right? Watch this. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walks in darkness knows not whether he is going. Mm-hmm. While you have light, believe in the light that ye may be the children of light. These things spake Yahushua and departed and did hide himself from them. All right. So after he said that to him, he got loose. He didn't answer any of their questions. Right. But he gave them a answer. He didn't answer the question that they had, but he did give them an answer. He said, listen, the light is with you right now. Walk in the light. Because a little bit about to be darkness and you ain't going to know where you're going. Right. Keep going. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him, that the saying of, of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report, Lord, who hath believed our report, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Mm -hmm. Therefore, they could not live, because Isaiah said again, he has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, that they should That's not right. see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart. And be converted and i should heal them so that's what we are up against when we are, when we are dealing with this when yahushua was in his tabernacle right we were dealing with the most High god many of us the most High god it blinded our eyes he had made it so that we didn't understand made it so that we didn't see he did that through prophecy that's why he don't tell us flat out like yo 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 in 13 days exactly this is gonna happen and then after that this is gonna happen and then after that you're gonna have to do this he could give us the whole play if he wanted to but no he speak to us in these dark sayings they're called dark sayings for a reason. What did he just tell you? When the light is with you, you can kind of see what's going on. He said, but mm, you're going to be walking in darkness. What do you think that means? You back to trying to figure out prophecy. Right? He trying to tell you, like, listen, if you were my disciple, oh, hold that. Go to, um, go to Matthew chapter 13. Trying to explain what he's trying to tell these people in very cryptic language. Even the solution that he's given to them is cryptic. But why is it? It's because Isaiah prophesied that even though they saw something, they ain't going to understand what they saw. They heard it. They ain't going to hear what they heard. Or they ain't going to understand what they hear. Right? That's the prophecy. That's the setup. We always talk about this is a setup. Right? It is a setup. That is the setup. Now, it's our job to push past it. It ain't the end of the world. Y'all sure die and you didn't believe on them. That's not the end of the world. We know that's not the end of the world. <clears throat> after after we go um, after we go to Matthew chapter thirteen, uh, we go into uh, Acts chapter two. It's Matthew chapter thirteen. Give me verse one. The same day went Yahushua sure out of the house and sat by the seaside. And great multitudes were gathered together unto him. Great what? Great multitudes were gathered together unto him. Oh, hold that. Go to um uh give me give me Exodus chapter 23, verse 1. Give me Exodus chapter 23, maybe verse 3. We got to do a little bit of turning, right? We got to do Exodus chapter 23, verse 3. Then we're going to come back to, to uh, Matthew chapter 13. Then we're going to go to Acts chapter 2. Exodus chapter 23, verse 3. You want verse 2? Verse 2. This is Exodus chapter 23, verse 2. Watch what the book say. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Right? Books say, thou shall not follow a what? A multitude to do evil. But what should you do instead? Keep going. 
Neither shall thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. Right? Neither shall y'all follow after a whole bunch of people to mess around and mess up judgment. Right? What should you do? Neither shall thou countenance, neither shall thou countenance a poor man in his cause. Mm-hmm. If thou meet thine enemy's ox or his donkey going astray, thou shalt surely bring it back to him again. Right? So he's saying no matter how many people are aligned to something, if you don't understand it to be the right thing, then don't just join with them just because it's a lot of people. Right? Just because it's a lot of people doing something. He said, don't just follow that foolishness. That's our law. That's wisdom that comes from our law. So now let's go back to Matthew chapter 13. Because Matthew chapter 13 going to tell you it was a great multitude. A great multitude of people. And the great multitudes were gathered together unto him so that he went into a ship and sat and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Right. So they followed him. He went and look, it's a great multitude that coming after him. He going. You just heard how how he told the other people like, yo, man, it's only going to be day for a little bit. Then it's going to be dark. I ain't going to know where y'all going. Then what the book say he did right after that. Yeah. We just ready on here. Yeah. It said he hid himself from him. He told him, like, yo, man, look, the day going to be for a little bit, then the dark. After that, he was like, man, I'm up out of here. Boom. Then he got loose. So now he got this great multitude after him. What do you think he's trying to do? Man, he's like, man, oh, y'all everywhere. Goodness, great. Then he went, and the book said he went and got in what, Brother T? He went into a boat and sat. Oh, they can't get me in this boat now. So then he climbed into the boat, and he sat. And what what the great multitude do? And the whole multitude stood on the shore. Right? They went all the way as far as they could right there on the shore. At them. So now watch what he did because they so persistent to get to him. it's a great multitude and they are persistent. And what do, what do you think they following them for? Miracles. They signs and wonders. They trying to see what is this man talking about? They trying to learn. They seeking Yahushua, the Messiah. Right. So now let's look. They in the boat. Y'all shoe in the boat. Watch what happened. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no depthness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had not root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell in good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who has ears to hear? Let him hear. Right. So now he told them about a man who's taking seeds and planting them in the ground in different places. Some people, some stones, some is over here on this ground, some on this ground and some on some good ground. And some was successful. Some wasn't successful. It just got ate up by birds and all types of stuff. Right. So he gave them different scenarios of plants. These people, you got to you got to put yourself in the moment. These people following him probably for miles. Right. He like a celebrity following them for miles. Just trying to get like, hey, I heard you healed some people. I heard some crazy stuff happen. You must be the Messiah. Let me hear about you. I want to be a part of this moment in history. Right. Truly looking for him. He turned around. He say, look, it was a man. And he planted some stuff. And he planted some stuff here, and he planted some stuff here, and planted some stuff here, and then this what happened, this, that, and the other. What do you think they supposed to take from that? These people looking around like, what in the world? Why is he telling us this story about somebody planting stuff? But watch what happens next. And the disciples came and said unto him, The who came? The disciples. The disciples came. And said unto him, what they say? Why speakest thou unto them in parables? They asking the question because this is unusual for them. They looking like, man, listen, you just be telling us what's going on. You don't even do this to us. When it comes to us in this time, they want to be taught, master. They looking at him like, master, they want to be taught. We want to be taught too. When we want to be taught, you just tell us what's going on. 
All of a sudden, now they want to be taught, and you telling them about somebody who sprinkling seeds in the field. Like, what do you? What do they have to do? Like, what are they supposed to take that? How are they supposed to use this information? Right. So they asked him, "Watch this." He answered and said unto them, "Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but unto them mm -hmm. it is not given. For whosoever has, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance." But whosoever has not from him shall be taken away, even that he has. Therefore, right? So he's telling them for them, who is the them in this situation? The multitude. The multitude, the people who are following the Messiah, right? The great multitude following the Messiah. They're doing the right thing by following the Messiah. They ain't doing nothing evil, right? But our law tells us just because a multitude is doing something, don't mean that your butt need to be trying to do the same thing. There is a difference between the multitude that follows Christ, right? The Christian. There is a difference between the Christian and the disciple. And what Yahushua was trying to tell the gentleman in, in John chapter 12, he was trying to explain to them, if you were my disciple, you would be in the light right now. If you walk with me while this short time that you got me, if you was my disciple right now, you will be in the light. But it's going to be a time where you don't even have an opportunity to walk with me. And everybody going to have to, even my disciple going to have to try to figure it out from the mud. The only people that got the vision was the apostles. The rest of the disciples, they got to figure it out from the apostles or from the scripture. So understand what he was communicating. He's saying, listen. This is my temple. This is my, 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 my tent, rather, my tabernacle. This thing is tap temporary. Eventually, this is going to go away. But while it's here, right? It's like the, the infomercial. You know what I'm saying? You look at it and you're like, let me see. We have a marker. Now, that, now, Susie, this is the best marker that you've seen. Let me show you, Susie. This marker writes in 17 different colors, although it's only one marker. Right? Try to erase it. No, no, Susie, go ahead. Try to erase it. It won't erase, right? Right? If that gets on your wall, it won't erase. But watch this. Turn it to the other side. Now go ahead. Scrape it. It comes right off. Let me tell you, folks, ladies and gentlemen, this is a marker. They call it the magic marker today for only the price of $19.99. You can get one of these markers. But if you act now, We'll throw in two markers for $19.99, right? That's what Yahushua was just doing. Yahushua is telling them, listen, you can figure it out later. I'm not telling you. It's going to be dark, but you can figure that thing out. But if you act now, I'll lighten this whole thing up for you. i explain the whole thing for you. If you my disciple right now, we can knock this thing out the park right now, Right? So that's how Yahushua is trying to explain it to him. But it's cryptic. It's dark. You have to be able to catch that. And only the Most High God is going to give it to you. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Therefore, speak I to them in parables because they... He said, because of that, when they say therefore, he's saying because of that, right? So he's saying, look, it's not given unto them. It is given unto you. The them in this conversation is who? Multitude. The multitudes. The, the you is who? The, the disciples. disciples. Not given to the Christians. Not given to the Muslims. Not given to anybody who want to run their mouth talking about, oh, I follow Yahushua. I am this. The Hebrew Israelites, not given to. Whatever you call yourself, you're calling yourself something that it was not given to. The man called us disciples. He says specifically, I don't understand it. Me personally, when I see this, I say, oh, you crazy if you think I'm going to call myself anything other than that. You crazy if I'm going to attach myself to something that's promiseless. That makes zero sense to me. The man just promised me through his own mouth that it's given to me. Guess what? I'm a disciple. I'm going to fake it till I darn make it, even if I ain't a disciple. What? I'm going to call myself a Christian. I ain't got nothing. I'm not even a real. Look, you let a, you let a group of Christians tell it. No other Christian is a real Christian. <laughs> they define their own rules. He's not a real Christian. Yeah, it's like, oh, well, I mean, he's a Christian, but he's not a real Christian. 
That's what they do about every lie. All the lie, they be like, they be like, yeah, you have to speak to yourself. Positive affirmations. <laughs> so I'll be talking to them, be like, all right, I got another one. So I just repeat to myself, I'm a millionaire, I'm a millionaire, I'm a millionaire. Right? This stuff is a this stuff is effective, right? I'm a millionaire, I'm a millionaire, I'm a millionaire. How many times do I gotta say it before it happens? Is there like a, a barrier on it? Well, see, you just gotta actually believe it. Oh. So what do you mean by act? How do I know what because I feel like I believe it when I'm saying it? How do I know that I actually believe it? Well, if you believe it, you're gonna put it in the work to go get the million dollars. So I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. So what about the person? Who say I'm a millionaire and don't put in the work to go get the million dollars? You're not gonna be a millionaire. Okay, but what about the millionaire who do put in the work but don't say I'm a millionaire? You're gonna be a millionaire too. So is it about the affirmation or is it about the work? The whole world gonna testify, Yahushua. Everything gonna bring you back to the same conclusion. It's never about what your mouth said. It's always about the work. It's always about the behavior. You're right. If you work hard and you make the right decisions and you and you take advantage of the right opportunities, that you're going to be a millionaire. And that's going to happen whether you say it out your mouth, whether you think it in your head or not. Because the, the, the call is, that's not a real affirmation. That's not a real Christian. That's not it. Because guess what? Who defines it? Who defines what an affirmation is? The person that's already successful. You get to these successful people, these, these business owners, they never going to tell you the full truth. Nope. These successful to you, these business, they're they going to tell you, listen, let me tell you what I did. I read this book. <laughs> the Power of a Millionaire's Dream. Oh. <laughs> I wrote the book too. <laughs> I wrote the book too. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote the book too. That's a bad, that's a bad boy. <laughs> that's a bad, I wrote the book too. But that's how they light you up. You in your mind, you looking at it because we we we're we're so aspirational and we want the things. So, so we looking at it like, man, this guy must be wise. Okay, he has a million dollars. Well, how you know he got a million dollars? These people be lying at their mouth. But even if he do got a million dollars, why do you believe this story? I mean, but they're all saying the same thing. Yeah, you know what else? They're all on the same stage. They're all hired by the same person. They're all promoting the same product. That's what happens. I have meetings at work too. It's like, uh, you have to do this presentation. Here, I, you know, I'd like to present. No, don't present that. Let me tell you what you're going to present. Present this. All right. Why? Because the focus point of this of this town hall, we want to drive this message. So it's key messages that we drive it. Right. And I got to go. If I'm a present, I got to align with those key messages. Matter of fact, when I present, if I get to talking about too much that's off subject, it becomes confusing for the message. If the message if the message is about our earnings this year. And I get to talking about fraud losses. That don't make sense. That's, that's confused. Like, hold on. I thought we were talking about earnings. People like to get a clear, succinct message. That's how people are. You get to introduce them too much nuance. People don't like that. Make them uncomfortable. I had to learn that in my career. Like, no, that's the message. You can go. So guess what? When these guys are on stage and they're telling you how to make a million dollars in 31 days and all this silly stuff that they're doing, <laughs> Right? They're promoting to you a product and there's a message and they were chosen because they were the right people to deliver the message for whoever is putting together the event. You can't believe what people would tell. They never going to tell you how they never going to tell you how they how they compromise themselves. They're going to give you the fake struggle, right? They're not going to give you that real struggle. They're going to give you the fake one. Like, oh, no. For 17 days, I was homeless. On the street. Have you ever lived on the street? On the street, not a dime to my name. Then they never gonna tell you how they did that because they were smoking drugs in their mama basement, and they rich mama said, "Get your butt out my house." And then seventeen days on the eighteenth day, she's like, "I'm sorry, Johnny. Come here. 
Come here. So, yeah, I just want more for you, Johnny. Here's a $50,000 loan to start your business. They're not going to tell you that part. That part, they gonna, this is how they're going to explain that part. I worked hard. I called every family, family member I had. It came from their mama, the one that lived with them, that they talked to every darn day. I called every family member I could to see who would like to invest in my business idea. Your mama gave you the business idea, boy. Cut that stuff out. But they say this stuff, and we are to believe it. And then we say, you know what? I need to have positive affirmations like him. That'll get me somewhere. Now our stupid butts is in the mirror every morning repeating stupid stuff to ourselves, just lying to ourselves, and ain't nothing happening. So now we battling with depression because it's like, I know I feel like I'm doing it right, but I'm not believing right clearly, and I don't understand why I'm not believing right. So now you get yourself into this false hope. You get shut down in the world every time something don't play out that way, and now you're sick and taking pills and trying to take yourself out this world. This stuff is sick, what they do to our brains. But we can't just put that on them. We do it to ourselves, believe in all this foolishness. The book is right here. He tell you, you want a positive affirmation, the book will tell you. Sit your butt down and obey the book. Don't get no more affirmative than that. Keep going. What we got? And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, by hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is racks gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their mm -hmm. eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted, and I should heal them. Mm -hmm. But blessed are your eyes, for they see. Blessed are your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them. And to hear Right, he said, many hear. prophets and righteous men have aspired to see the stuff that y'all seeing and they have not seen it. In other words, what he's telling them is, this is not nothing regular that's happening around y'all. He's telling the disciples this. Because the disciples, remember, paint the scene. The disciples are coming to him. They're saying, yo, why you, because disciples, this is weird. Why are you talking to them like this? Just tell them what's going on. I don't know what you were talking about when you're talking about somebody sewing and all, I don't know what that, why don't you, why you keep talking to them like that? Oh, now I'm talking to them like that because it's not meant for them. It's meant for y'all. It's not meant for them. Because, you know, you read the prophecy of Isaiah, right? And he's explaining it to them now, right? He's explaining it to them. He's giving them the details of why he can't explain it to the, the Christians, right? And so he's sitting there. He's like, listen, you do understand that Isaiah, when he is talking about seeing, they wouldn't see and hearing, they wouldn't hear. You know what I'm saying? They might be dull. They might be converted. That's, that's, that's what this is all about right now. That's why I can't, I can't say that to them. Right. I can't get him that information. So the disciples, he, he, told, he explained to them, he's like, listen, it's a whole lot of righteous men and prophets that wish they can get what y'all getting right now. Do you understand what type of honor that had to be to stand next to Yahushua? And he giving you something that the prophets that you look at and read and get guidance from. They was looking to get what you getting right now because you getting guidance directly from the man. That's crazy. But anybody at that time that the Most High God was speaking to in parables intentionally so that they wouldn't understand, guess what? It's no way that they would have been able to understand that. It's no way that they would have kind of been able to kind of make two and two together. You had to just keep, keep, keep going, hear what the man said, and hope that he revealed it to you. Hope that he opened it up to you. Keep going. Watch this. Hear you, therefore, the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and understands it not, then comes the wicked one and catches away that which is sown in his heart. Who is he explaining this to? The disciple. Because they didn't understand it either. The disciple looking like, what was that foolishness you were just telling about? The sower, somebody sowing seeds? People be sowing seeds every day, but I don't get it. Like, what is it? All right, let me explain. I can't explain to them because X, Y, and Z. Okay, but let me explain it to you. This is the parable of the sower. He said, listen, when the word is preached to them, and the wicked one come and snatch it. Man, that's that parable. That's the parable, right? That's the first part of the parable. Keep going. Watch this. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and understands it not, then comes the wicked one and cast, catches away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. But he, mm -hmm. that, but he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that hears the word and anon with joy receive it. Yet hath he not rooted himself, but endures for a while. 
For when the tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended. All right? This happens to all of us. We be seeing it. We be happy. You can see some some of us and seeing the people coming in here, right? Be happy to get it. I ain't never heard no word like that, boy. And Lord, really? They look, they stop you at the end of study. Look you in that. Look, the Lord really be working through you, brother. That is some good word. I ain't never heard the word broken down like that. That's some good word. Let me tell you, it really touched my soul. Like, yeah, man, brother, I praise y'all for that, right? See him on Facebook the next day. Oh, you know because it didn't take root. It hit. They know what they heard. There's no confusion about that, but it don't take root. Some of them, they never even get it. They just be looking like, huh? They hear, this is what it, start, start all over. Start, start at the beginning of the explanation. I'm going to break down everyone. I'm going to tell y'all, I'm going to give y'all an example of every one of these, right? Watch this. Start, start at the beginning again. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom the under, and understands it not, then comes the wicked one and catches away, which was sown in his heart. This is he that received seed by the wayside. So this is this person, right? You preach him the word, right? And maybe this night we talking about, let's say we talking about, we talking about Paul in the order of the, of the congregation. Paul said, you know, the order of the congregation, he said, listen, you know, the man is the head, right? And he's the head of the family, head of the wife. The wife then runs the family, right? That's just how it works. But what if the wife, you know, young lady, what if the wife has more intelligence than her husband? No, no, that's fine. That's fine. It's just, you know, whatever. So what if she understands the Bible better? No, that's, that's good that she does praise Yah. She just can't teach it to him. Why can't she teach it? See, this is what I'm talking about. I think the Bible is misogynistic <laughs> right that's what that one is because she never even got a chance to understand she got triggered by something yep. and it blocked all understanding all she heard was man head oh, <laughs> he's not doing this you know that they don't make no sense to me that thing don't make no sense or the hebrew israelite the hebrew israelite you look at him like no nah, man i know the scripture law love law keeper you know what i'm saying law keeper you know what i'm saying all right for sure so listen, let's talk about the word, this, that, and other, da, da, da. So you have to understand, brother, that the Gentile don't need to be circumcised. That's what Paul's talking about. See, no, nah, but Paul, Paul don't know what he's talking about. See, Paul, sometimes he speak on his own accord. Look, whole thing gone. Whole thing gone. He don't have a chance of hearing it. Right? So that's the ones. It's just the word came to him, but something they got, it blocks it. It just like... No, I don't want to hear nothing else because this makes me angry or I'm offended about this part. Right. Let's get to the next one. But he that receives seed into stony places, the same as he that hears the word and anon with joy receive it. Yet he has not root in himself, but endures for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended. That boy break. All right. So that's our boy. That's our boy. Like, Man, that was some good word, brother. I'm telling you some good word. And he go out and brother gets to him like, uh, you ain't drinking tonight? No, no, no. Man, you suck, boy. You know what I'm saying? That boy, look, he wanted to drink. He think he a Christian now. Is that enough? I'd be like, man, please, please give me that drink. You know what I'm saying? And he get that thing. Now, that's done for him. That's done for him. He heard it. He felt it. He knew what he heard. But man, it's a little tough when you get out there in them streets. Right? What's the next one? He also that receives seed among the thorn is he that hears the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and becomes and he becomes unfruitful. All right. So this one, this is the one they hear the word. They show up to Bible study every 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 week. Right. But then it's tax time. <laughs> it's tax time. You know what I'm saying? And usually I claim my friend and all my sister's kids <laughs> because they got too many kids. Ain't nobody else claiming them. <laughs> so they get to telling all these lies and then brother Phil always got to get in the way. He get it. And it's, I happen to bring it up during tax time. You know what I'm saying? I'll be lying on documents. This, that, and other, blah, blah, blah. and they looking like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I spent all of this year's money. Waiting for tax time to come around so I can profit off of my sister kids. 
what am I supposed to do now? If this don't go down, they make a real life decision. If I can't do this, I am in debt and I'm going to have to file bankruptcy. I'm going to lose my house. My kids ain't going to be able to eat. We all going to be on the street. I'm going to have to go live with my mama again. This is a bad situation. And I know God don't want that for me. I know that God don't want that for me. So you guess what I'm going to do? Just this last time. Yeah, that's my daughter. That's my, that's my son. What's the max? Three? You know what I'm saying? That's what I did. I just went to go have three kids. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, look, we're going to solve this problem. Because I can't, you know what I'm saying? Let me just get three of them on there. Just three, you know what I'm saying? Just give me the whole check. And then Biden going to come around and take away the child care. T- don't get me started. I don't understand why he hate me so much. They're going to send all my money to Ukraine. That's crazy to me. Look, when Trump was in, he gave me the whole check for each kid. I was looking like, you know what? You are. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You are. Right. I don't care what the Democrats say about you. You are. Right. He ain't never called me an N word. You know what I'm talking about? I was looking like, he might be a little racist. You know what I'm saying? But a little, little racy. He ain't racist. He's a little racy. You know what I'm saying? A little racy. He ain't said to me, though. You know what I mean? Who he said to? I ain't hear him. Yo, my thing was. My thing was. I ain't hear him. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got it on. Y'all got it on tape. You know what I'm saying? I ain't hear it. No, my thing yeah. was Biden yeah. actually, like threw a bunch of black people in jail. You know what I'm saying? Oh, he's Biden still on it. Y'all like, saw what he did to LL Cool J? He and now look, <laughs> Biden's a bad boy. That's a bad man. Look, LL Cool J, look, LL Cool J up there celebrating 50 years of hip hop. Biden bring them on. This next person that's coming on is uh Ella Ella Lalala Palula. Uh, uh, this boy, this boy is this that another? Kid you not? Go look it up. He like this boy, and then he tried to correct himself. Uh, uh, this this man is this? That? I was like, no, nah, you said it. You said it. You said it. I don't listen. I was talking. To, I was talking to a good friend of mine the other day, and we were talking. We, we always talk about politics and everything. She always give me. I try to stay out of it. I'm like, I don't want to talk about this stuff. But she know how to get me. She do. She know how to get me. She know how to add, you know an oak. She know how to get me. You know what I'm saying? So she asked the right question. She was like, so you don't think that was an insurrection? I was like, I don't care if it was an insurrection. What are that white people business? They ain't got nothing to do with me. They started this country with an insurrection. You know what I'm saying? We all celebrate that one. <laughs> they might have been right. Y'all might have stopped a good thing. I don't know. <laughs> they ain't none of my business. It never worked out for me either, either way it go. Well, you know what I'm saying? That thing, that thing always a detriment to me. I'm not messing with none of the white people fight. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's like, so we we going back and forth. She is like, it's like, you know what I'm saying? But Trump is racist. I was like, yeah, true, true. You got me there, right? But if I'm going to go down the racist tree, there's a whole lot of branches I got to fall on before I get to Trump. So I'm like, let's just, I'm cool. If we, if we judge everybody evenly, we going to end up back where I'm telling you right now. Because it'll be like, oh, they all racist. Okay, great. Let's go down the next level. Okay, they all racist and they do harmful stuff to black people? Oh, no. A lot of them are racist and does harmful stuff to black people. Trump is just racist. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's, just, he's just racist. You know what I'm saying? It's like, he just don't think about black people. And sometimes we accidentally benefit from some of the stupid stuff he do. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It's like, if he knew that we had been in, he'd probably be like, oh, man, stop that. You know what I'm saying? But he, don't even, he ain't even smart enough to realize, oh, that's helping black people. You know what I'm saying? So he just go it, and I'll take the dumb white man over the smart one. <laughs> if I got to take a racist person, why well, I'm going to pick the smartest racist person in the world? Biden too smart. You see what he did? Do you see what he did to his own people? Look, Bernie Sanders had the whole thing. Everybody was talking about Sanders, Sanders, free college, free everything. Everything free. You know black people like that. <laughs> we looking like finally it's the closest we about to get to reparations. Reparations. Make the thing, you know what I'm saying, free. They scooted that boy right on out and used black people to do it. It's cold-blooded. What was it, North Carolina? South Carolina, I think. Oh. It was one of the Carolinas, if I'm not mistaken. They called up all the black people. Look, look, we got a problem. The black folks starting to like this man a little bit. Now, I was the vice president to Obama. That means something. Just saying. Right? That means something. Why don't y'all come out in support of me, all y'all, at the same time on one day? And then they pushed my mans out. Broke his little heart, his little old heart. You know, he's an old man. 
He a little heartbroken. He don't even want to run for president no more. He was supposed to win. He probably would have whooped on Trump. Right? They do that, you know what I'm saying? This is where Boy, we are. Look, Biden got me, bro, when he, like, made the 94 crime bill, put a whole lot of black people in jail unjustly, and had the nerve to say, you know what I'm saying, like, Trump's racist. I'm like, yeah, Trump racist, but you actually, like, did messed up stuff to us. You know what I'm saying? Like, like what? Like, that thing was wild. Like, you actually did a crime against us. You know what I'm saying? Like, actually. He locked you know our know people up for crack? Guns, right? Guess what this son get caught on video doing? All over the internet. Smoking crack. Look, this is a rich white man smoking crack. Not not cocaine. You're doing that too. But they got videos with a crack pipe. The nerve of these people to make it look like our people are the crackheads. No, y'all some highly functioning, money-having crackhead. We just was poor crackheads. Y'all was just rich crackheads and still are. When was the last time that you personally dealt with somebody that was smoking crack? It's very rare now. It's still happening, though. Don't make no sense. It's still happening. But it's very rare now that we going to run around somebody smoking crack. Meanwhile, in 2000, what was that? 20? In 2020, in order for Biden to win, he had to. He had, to, he had to work with all the media companies pretty much to step on all these video because that was about to threaten his, his, his run. So yeah, look, 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 Twitter, say that is Russian disinformation. Right? Biden just got sued. He just got sued by uh, a bunch of people and they took him to a judge and the judge re read all the evidence and the judge was like, oh, this is egregious. The Biden administration has been reaching out to all the media companies and all the social media companies and telling them what to post and what not to post and what to take down and what not to take down. So then the, the judge was like, listen, until, until this is all figured out, Biden is to not, his administration is to not have any com communication with anybody. And then they fought it was like, no, 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 we need that communication. They took it to another judge and got it overturned so they can communicate with him again. It's a dirty game that's being played right now. Dirty, 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 nasty little political games. More so than what we've I've ever heard of in my life, right? But that's what happens, right? You got these, these sick people that make these decisions and they don't got God in anywhere in their plans. So that's the minefield that we got. And when somebody come and try to teach us the word, these are all the things that's, that's getting it. And if the cares of this world begin to affect us, Right. If the cares of this world calls us to put God second, then guess what? We just see thrown with amongst thorns. Right. Them thorns are just going to choke out everything because the thorns is the world. The world is just going to choke out everything that we heard from the word. We heard it. We knew what we heard. We knew it's right. But when it comes down to feed my kids, feed my family. Yeah. You know, you know, that's the, the best excuse we got for ourselves. And you getting in the way of feeding my family. God is a God of family. God wouldn't want me. That ain't a God. God wouldn't want me to sit out here suffering. All right. You tell yourself what you want to. You must not know. You ain't never heard of Abraham. He told that man, kill his boy. To go up there and kill him. Oh, he kid dead. Right? Y'all, she would told us. He said, if you're not willing to leave your children, your wife, your mom, your dad, you're not worthy. It ain't even a conversation right now. You can tell you can you can you can read whatever Christianized standard version you want. You ain't gonna read that God is a God of family. <laughs> put family above God. That's craziness. That's nuts. If the Most High God put you in a position where you gotta choose between your family and and Him, what you better do is be like. Man, this better be an Abraham test. I'm going to choose God, though. It better be an Abraham. Like, like you supposed to say, stay your hand about now, God. All right. I'm still going through with it. He ain't going to tell you to kill your kids now. You know what I'm saying? He told Abraham to do that. But he, you know what I'm saying? I think he already proved his point with that. I think we safe on that one. Somebody telling you to kill, kill your kids, question it a couple times. You know what I'm saying? Like, what spirit is this, Lord? You know what I mean? <laughs> you literally said, don't deliver him to the fire the bullet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, what spirit is this that's talking to me? You got to test the spirit.
Keep going. What's the last one? Let me tell you something. Just one more time before we go move forward. If anybody tells me to vote for Joe Biden, I just might, be, <laughs> I just might lose. I'm flipping desk chairs, slamming doors. Yeah, you know <laughs> kick, it, kick it down. We didn't mention Biden and Trump too many times. YouTube probably taking it down right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Biden probably on the phone with YouTube. Like, yeah, yeah, go ahead and kill that one. And he got the dirt to say, if you don't vote for me, you're not black. Like, you. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, that's a dirt. That's a dirty, nasty man. That's a dirty, dirty, nasty man. And he be, and he be having his hands on the little girl smelling they darn hair in the video. I watched a video of him smelling a bunch of girls. I was like, this is a dirty, nasty. I am like, I can't believe. I, everything y'all say about Trump, apply to him, too. All the stuff. Trump a dirty, nasty man. Don't, don't let Trump get by. I just look past it for the sake of my people. You know what I'm talking about? But Trump a dirty, nasty man, too. But look, if we just compare apples to apples... Let's just skip past all of the stuff that's equal among both of them and let's get to what's different. What's different? This guy hates black people. This guy hates black people. This guy going to make sure black people feel it. This guy ain't smart enough to think about black people right now. He's still trying to he's still trying to get his business off the ground. He trying to start another one. You know what I'm saying? What's his uh what's his thing called? Mara, what's it called? Mara Lago. Boy, he he trying to turn that from 6 Billy the 26 billion. You know what I'm saying? That boy trying to do something special. He tried to do something with the post office too. I think he owned a post office in New York. Trump a corrupt boy too. We can get into him too. Yeah. But I take his I take it corruption a little bit. Cause it worked out for us a little bit. A little bit it did. Let me see. Keep going. Mm-hmm. And he let Lil Wayne out of jail. <laughs> well, I had, hey. I had, I had ASAP, more. yeah. Okay. I had no money in my pocket. Oh, yeah, Kodak, too. Yeah, he got him out, too. He got a couple of them boys out. What we got? I said, I had more money in my pocket making less at work when Trump was in. That's all I'm saying. That's for sure. <laughs> That's for sure. It's a different time. <laughs> all right. I'm saying, that, thing don't make no, that thing don't make no sense. When you when you got me walking around talking about make America greater again then. You know what I'm saying? That thing, you know what I'm saying? That thing don't make no sense. Something wrong. Something wrong. Let's keep going, though. Let's try to get through this. But he that receives seed into good ground is he that hears the word and understands it, which also bears fruit and brings forth some 30-fold and some 60, 100-fold and some 60 and some 30. All right. So he is trying to explain the different types of people through, through that parable. But that parable is only given to us. At the end of the day, it's about hearing the word and not just hearing it. Right. It's about hearing a word and not just knowing that you heard a word and that is true. It's about hearing a word, and not just knowing that the man of God that it came from is. Mm, yeah, that's the real deal right there. It's about hearing the word and then becoming a doer of that word. When you're a doer of that word. Hey, sit y'all butts down. You too, Mayala. Sit down. Right. It's about hearing the word and becoming a doer of the word. And when you're a doer of the word, that becomes fruit. And it's about producing fruit. Just like it says, you have to a seed has to be planted. It has to be nurtured. And fruit has to grow. That is what the most high God looks for. Anything less than that. If fruit don't grow. The, now, sometimes some people got a little more fruit growing than others. That's fine. That's just different. You know what I'm saying? Some people going to be least in the kingdom. Some people going to be great. That's all that is. Right. But something got to grow. You got to show something. Right. And if you don't show anything, then you're not in nothing. Right. You killing time. You wasting time. You deceiving yourself. You are not in nothing. But the fruit got to show. And what is fruit? Fruit is work. Fruit is the behavior of your life. Fruit is not the Christians that how you thinking fruit is finances and and wealth and all these different things, assets and all that. No, 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 no. That's not fruit. I pray. I pray that that happened to all of us. Right. But that is not the fruit. The fruit is the behavior, your behavior that lines up with the written scripture. When your behavior line up then you can say, OK, that's fruit. That's fruit of the spirit. Let's talk about fruit of the spirit. This is a uh, second, uh, second Peter, second Peter chapter one. Galatians. This Danielle said they all on the same team. They definitely on the same team. The Democrats and the Republicans, boy, them boy. I remember. Look, when I voted for Obama, I was so happy about voting for Obama. Yeah, they when I voted for him, I was like, yeah, man, brother in there. You know what I'm talking about? 
what was that, 18, 19, something 18, like that? 18. I was looking like, man, this, that, another. Then, you know what I'm saying, I had to start, I had to start, I had to start, you know what I'm saying, ingesting all the stuff that they were telling me to say. They told me like, yeah, well, Obama, the only reason he didn't do such and such is because the Republicans. And I was like, yeah, man, the Republicans. They stopped Obama from doing all that stuff, man. Don't you know that? It's the Republicans' fault. They always divide anything that the Democrats want to do. The Republicans stand against it because they hate black people. So I was sitting there. I was looking like, okay, okay, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Then, because, you know, it's not enough for me. When I, when I get in an argument and somebody make a point, I got to be like, well, let me check that out. Somebody must have told me something. So I found this website that's called Gov Tracker, And it show you all the bills and who voted for them and what party they from and all of it. And I was just going down that bill like, yeah, look these, I'm going to see how bad these Republicans are. And I'm going to show y'all with empirical proof that these Republicans stand against everything that the Democrats do. Oh, man, it had to be hundreds of bills. Republican, Democrat, all of them voting for the same thing in unison. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of bills. Then it's a couple bills where it's like, oh, no, nah, we ain't messing with you. This is all Democrats. And nope, we ain't messing with you. This is all Republicans, right? But the mass majority of the bills. So I was like. These guys are actually friends. <laughs> These yeah. guys get along quite well for the majority of stuff. Let me look into some of the stuff that they voting for. Oh, and all of it. All of it is stuff that ain't got nothing to do with anything important, but it definitely got something to do with lining their darn pockets. $100,000 here. $2 million here. Send a billion dollars here. Then you look it up and this man got, he got a relationship with this person in Saudi Arabia. You, so y'all hear about Senator Mendez. Senator Mendez, they just raided his house, right? He's a Democrat. They just raided his house. They found $500,000 worth of gold bars. I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollars laced and lined into his jacket coats inside of his closet. So he out here hiding money. And they say this was a bribe from Egypt, I think. It was Egypt for him to vote for uh, military aid to go to Egypt. Because, you know, military aid is laundering. That's just money laundering, right? You take a company, they get the mil military aid at the country. The country sells, resells that military stuff to the terrorists or to the, you know what I'm saying, to these other people. And then they say, oh, we left it and they got it. And then once that they don't have it anymore, they just say, I need more military aid and they just keep going. That's why war is such a big business. That's why that's what's happening in Ukraine. That's what all this stuff is. It's just, it's just money laundering, right? So people are moving money around and creating money in that process, right? And so he got busted because he didn't, you know, look, if you make this deal go through, I'm going to get you. So he got, now he pled not guilty. We're going to see what happened. You know what I'm saying? We're going to see what happened. But these people are dirty, nasty people. You right, though. They all on the same side. They all on the same side. That thing is an illusion thinking that, you know what I'm saying, that they fighting against each other and you doing something righteous by fighting for your party. Nah, -uh. Sit your butt down. These boys all tricky. You being manipulated. That's all. This is a, uh, this is a, uh, what I say I want it? Second, Second Peter. Peter, give me Second Peter. Chapter one, start me off at verse maybe three. Second Peter chapter one at verse three. According as his divine power has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Watch this. Through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. Right? So you start off with faith. What is faith? We got two definitions, scriptural definitions of faith. Who remembers them? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith. Faith is the substance of things. Oh. Hebrews chapter 11. Let's get it real quick. Let's just get it. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, real quick. That's another good one. It's Hebrew. Give it to us, give it to us brother Daniel. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Right? Substance of things hoped for. Evidence of things not seen. Faith, then, is works. That's 
What Hebrews is saying there is the exact same thing that James said. He said, show me your faith without works. I'll show you my faith by my works. My works are the substance of what I hope for and the evidence of what can't be seen. Right? There's no way to show your faith outside of works. That is the only substance and evidence, right? So that's one definition of faith. Because a person could say, hey, well, I have faith in this light right here, right? And my substance is that I'm going to look at the light until I'm blind. I don't know, right? So, so a person can have faith in anything, right? But now we have another definition. What's the second definition? Uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith has to come by the word of God, right? So with those two things aligned, that means the substance and the evidence that is shown through my works has to be aligned with what is in the word of God, right? So that's the very first thing, going back to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4, probably. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4, that is the very first thing that he said. He said, add on to your faith. So the starting point, you're not even in the conversation unless you have a behavior, consistent behavior that aligns with what the written word says. Right. And then from there, Peter is telling us, add on to our faith. What? Virtue. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue and to virtue, knowledge and to knowledge, temperance. And to temperance right. So now faith. virtue. Right. And on to virtue and virtue. Just think of virtue as. Uh, um, huh? Integrity. Eh, yeah, kind of integrity, right? Kind of integrity, morality, right? The the idea of of I care that the right thing is being done, right? So add to add to faith, virtue. What else? And to virtue, knowledge. And then after that, you add on to virtue, knowledge. So we talked about it. We talked about um we talked about in one of our fellowship calls. I think we were talking about how how. You know, like it's a whole lot of knowledge out there. It's a whole lot of different ways we can go. But it's important that we do the first thing first. So you see the first thing he said, faith, right? Very first thing, got to get the faith. That means that you've repented, you turned away. Good, right? Then the next one is going to be virtue. That means, okay, I care. I really, really have a care that the right thing is happening, that information is correct, that I'm doing things. At that point, he said, okay, it's good now to start focusing on knowledge, right? Because now you have a foundation where, I need to make sure I've repented from everything that I need to repent from. And I put my faith towards God. Then I now have a strong desire for things to be correct. Right. For things to be right. And now it's safe for me with those two things to start digging into knowledge. Because now additional knowledge is not going to confuse me or distract me or, or throw me off the path or give me an opening for Satan to come deceive me. Right. So then knowledge. And then add to knowledge what? Temperance. Now you got to add temperance. Because what's temperance? Patience, uh, not necessarily getting so angry so quick. Temp yeah, temperance is being able to deal with situations without losing control. Right? Something might make you mad, but you control your temper. Like, okay, I got it. Right? You give yourself, you give yourself like a little cue, like, okay, count to three. Mm -hmm. Two, three. No, it's okay. <laughs> it's all right. Right. That's temperance, because now that you got knowledge, now that you got virtue. Right. You look at these things. It's like, OK, well, I'm adding on to that. I'm adding on to my faith, virtue and my knowledge. I got to understand to get things right. And I got knowledge now. I got more information coming here. But what good is that if anything going to come and take me off of my path? Right. So next it's like, OK, temperance. But watch what comes out to that. It's, it's very similar. And to, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience. And to patience right, so patience is very similar to temperance. But patience is more of a time thing, right? Still deals with self-control, right? But it's more of a time thing. So it's saying, hey, I really, 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 really need this right now. But it's not happening right now. They calm, and I'll wait for it, right? I really, really know I have the knowledge. I have the virtue. I have the faith and I have the self-control not to get mad, right? But this person 
that I'm speaking this to is not listening to me. Patience is going to say, he heard me. He heard me. And if it's God's will, he'll come around. Right. So now I'm not wasting time calling this brother every day. Like, hey, I really, really want you to believe. I really, really want you to believe. Because if you do that, then a person can use that to manipulate you. Right. So instead, you do what the book say. The book give you an order and you have patience. OK. Call the brother two times. I mean, three times after that. We good. Leave it alone and let the most high God deal with it after that. Right. Keep going. Into temperance, patience, into patience, godliness, into mm -hmm. godliness, brotherly kindness, into brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord. That you right? shall neither be what? Barren nor unfruitful. Barren or unfruitful. He's saying that you will never be unfruitful. If these things abound, in other words, if these things continue to exceed. So the very first thing is faith, which is repentance, right? I want to repent. Then he said, after that, you need to constantly be adding these other, these other values to yourself. These are the fruits of the spirit. He said, you will never be unfruitful if you do this. Keep going. Watch this. But he that lacked these things are blind and cannot see afar off and has forgotten that he was once... That he was purged from his old sins. Grab. Um, oh, keep going. Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. He said, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Pay attention to that because Christians will try to tell you it's not about what you do. Right. Is is what is it? What they say? What was that catchphrase that you say at your old church? What was the one they used to say at, at your church, see? The, the Potter's House place. Uh, I don't know. Uh, they used to say something fancy up there. I thought that thing was towel out with these boys rappers. I don't know. Uh, they said something. They said, they said, uh, oh, Jesus Christ plus nothing else, right? Or something like that? Nah, it wasn't that simple. But I don't, I don't know. I don't remember. It was something like that. It was like, you know what I'm saying? Jesus Christ plus nothing else or, you know what I'm saying? Plus nothing or whatever. Cross, the cross plus nothing or something. But the idea was, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's nothing you could do. It's all God's. It's that nothing. Da, da, da. So then if it's nothing I can do, why in the world would Peter emphatically tell me to make my calling and election sure? You know, another way of saying that, make sure that you really called. Make sure that you really chosen. Because remember, I always say this. There's two ways that we can look at things, right? We got God's point of view, and that's what he's graciously shared with us. So when he tells us, I have foreknew, I foreknew you. You were in the, I knew you, but when you were in the womb, right? When he, he really didn't tell us that. He told, uh, who's that, Jeremiah or Isaiah? Jeremiah. He told Jeremiah that, right? So it wasn't necessarily to everybody, but we know that that is true for everybody either way, right? So when he gives us that insight, right, we then look at that and be like, yes, it's nothing you could do. Because God knew how it was going to play out from the womb. That's true. However, do you know? Do you know? Do you know how God saw you in the womb? Did, did he come down and tell you, yo, this is how it's going to play out? If he did, that's a different story. Ain't none of my business. Right? That's a prophecy you can share. Now, nah, that's your business, right? You do whatever you want between you and God, right? But if he didn't and you don't know, now, it's about you to make it sure. In other words, have the evidence that, yep, I can see it. I'm chosen. How do I know I'm chosen? Because my life lines up with the book and I've added virtue to my faith and to the faith. I mean, to the virtue, I've added knowledge and to the knowledge, I've added temperance and to my temperance, I've added patience and to the patience, I've added, what is it? Um, Godliness. Godliness and to the godliness, I've added uh, brotherly, brotherly kindness and to the brotherly kindness. I've added charity. Right. And now because of this, I'm constantly fruitful. Right. And now I'm making my calling an election. Sure. I'm not just saying it. Because that's not faith. I have to show you by my works. 
And I, we also have to show ourselves by the works. That's how I know for myself. That's I can believe in the book because my life starts to look like the book. I say, okay, cool. I have full confidence that my calling and election is sure. Watch what he say after that. Wherefore, rather, brother, and give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. You will never fall. Never fall. Constantly add these things. First thing, don't think about these things yet. First thing, repent from sin. That's the first. Repent from sin. You repent from sin. We always talk about what the sins are. Matthew 7, Ephesians 5, Galatians 5, 1 Corinthians 6, Revelations 22. That's your sins. It's not every sin in the whole world. Not everything is a sin. Not I can wake up in my bed and have a thought and that's a sin. That's not true. Look at the book. It tells you specifically what the sins are that will keep you out of the kingdom. Those are the sins. Turn from all of those. Every one of them. Right? After you turn from those, then continuously, without fail, add these things to it. Don't try to add these things before you turn away from the sin because now you're just de deceiving. You're just wasting time. You're killing time. Right? Turn away from sin first. Then add these things continually. You will be without sin for the rest of your life. For, uh, Second Peter, uh, First Peter chapter 4, real quick. And eventually we got to get back to the day of trumpets. These are trumpets. I guarantee it all tie in, though. It's uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. No, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1. For as much as the Messiah has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Mm -hmm. that, he should, that he no longer should live the rest of his life in the flesh of the lust of men, but to the will of God. Right. That is the, that's that's the that's the that's the requirement. It's not like, oh, just don't sin as much or like some Christians tell you. I mean, as long as you feel bad when you sin, that's how you know the Holy Spirit is working in you. What? 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 That goes against everything I learned. The man told me God has no fellowship with darkness. If a man say he sinned and also says that he's with God, he is a liar is what the books say. And people look at that and it's harsh. Yes, it does feel harsh. But that is the grace of God talking to you. Because if you run your mouth saying, I know God, I know God. And the man is telling you. That if you know me in Hebrews, he tell you, if you know me and then sin afterwards, there remains no sacrifice for you. Then now it's grace to say, oh, I know you. But I sin that make me a liar. It's better to say I was lying about it than to say I really knew you. And now it's no more sacrifice. You better take the lie. Take it. Don't even don't even fight it. I was lying. I was lying. Every time I repented and I sinned afterwards, I was like, no, nah, God, I was a liar. You know what I'm saying? I was a liar. I'd be running my darn mouth. I don't know what I was doing. This time, no, I'm serious. And if it happened that you sinned again after that, I was lying. Again. I can't stop lying. God removed it lie from me. But for real this time, I'm repent. Because eventually, when you get it right, it's going to have to go from there to the rest of your life. And that's going to be your salvation. You got to endure to the end. It ain't no moment that God showed up to you and the light shined out of the sun. And I just felt his spirit and dwell on me. You know how the Christian be using and dwell on me. And I knew that day in 1973, I was saved. But no, 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 it don't work like that. And you know, God say once saved, always saved. Well, yeah, you right. Because he knew who you was from the beginning. But do you know for the people who he knew from the beginning, once they, it's nothing that they can do. You right. It's nothing that they can do to stop themselves from being what he already foresaw. In them. You right. But do you know is the question. Because he's trying to give you a hint. He know what the diagnosis is. He's looking at, he already seen your x-rays, right? He know how it's going to play out. He know the treatment that he's giving you. But do you know what your symptoms are? Do you know what's going on inside? Because you? you got a choice. All you got to do is make the choices that's going to make your calling an election. Sure, sure. He know what choices you're going to end up making. But do you know? That's it. We got to focus more on us. We got to focus on working our own salvation out 
with fear and trembling. We can't put all this stuff. We put too much accountability on God when he already gave. He did everything. He did it all. What more do you want from the man? Gave you the whole book. He gave you his son. He gave you signs. He gave you miracles. What else do you want from him? Just for you to turn away from sin, that's beneficial to you. It's not even beneficial. It's like, listen, you're not helping him. Man told you after you get done doing everything that the master told you to do, look at yourself as an unprofitable servant. Ain't none of this stuff benefiting God. It's all stuff benefiting you. And you sitting there fighting. Do some more. Tap dance for me more, God. All right. Keep playing with the man. Keep playing with man. It's all about producing the fruit. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 16 real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 16, Deuteronomy chapter 16, give me verse 10, verse 13. It's Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 13. May Allah, are you okay? Don't get me started over here now. I'm leave my baby alone. Thou shalt observe the Feast of Tabernacle seven days after thou hast gathered thy corn and thy wine. After y'all have gathered what? Thou shalt observe the Feast of Tabernacle seven days after thou hast gathered thy corn and thy wine. After you gather what? Thy corn and thy wine. You gotta produce fruit. Because one day, the Most High God gonna come and he gonna gather it all. A lot of people don't try to, try to understand like, who gonna get taken? The wheat or the tares. Most high God is coming to gather his fruit. Be clear. Everything else getting burnt up. Keep going. Watch this. And thou shalt rejoice in thy feast, thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy manservant and thy maidservant and the Levite, the stranger and the fatherless and the widow that are within thy gates. Seven days shalt thou keep a solemn feast unto the Lord thy God in the place where in the place which the Lord shall choose. Because the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thy increase, and in all thy in all the works of thine hands. Therefore thou shalt surely rejoice. Three, three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, in the feast of unleavened bread, and in the feast of weeks, and the feast of tabernacles, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty. All right? So three times in the year we were told to appear, and the feast of tabernacles was one of those three. And he said, when we show, we shall not come up empty. The whole thing is prophesying about fruits. Right? A, a Christian pastor would have told y'all, don't show up empty. You go to collection plate, pass that thing around. But no, the, the prophecy it is, is talking about your fruit. This is what Yahushua, that's what it's testifying of. It's testifying that Yahushua one day, Right? It's going to need everybody to serve him to show up. And on that day, when we are all gathered, he's collecting fruit. He's harvesting. He's saying, look, bring all the fruit in, bring it in. And whoever don't have anything is being tossed out and burned. Let's end. John chapter 15, verse 1. This is John chapter 15, verse 1. I can go all day. But John chapter 15, verse 1, it'll sum it up for us. This is what Tabernacles is about. Preparing ourselves, preparing our heart to be ready for the Most High God when the time is right. It is coming. This is John chapter 15, verse 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that he bear, that bears fruit, he purges it, that he may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine. What does it mean to abide in him? Uh, okay. Stay in him. That's the faith. Right. And to just to make it because, you know, I like to make things very practical when we talk about faith. We're talking about works. When we talk about works, we're talking about behavior. When we talk about behavior, we're talking about behavior that lines up with the scripture, behavior that's described as commandments. Right. Specifically, the commandments that come from Yahushua and what we told uh, what we were told to repent from and the things that we just read in Second Peter and what we were told to add on to our faith. Right. These are the things that he is looking to see. 
You cannot do those things unless you abide in him. In other words, you cannot do those things unless you maintain the very first thing, which is faith. So as long as you have the faith, now you can add on the others, which is your fruit. If you lose that faith, it don't matter how much self-control you think you have. It don't, have, it don't matter how much brotherly love you think you have. Right? If the faith, if it's not rooted in the faith and you out here lying and you cussing, you cheating and doing whatever you're doing, all those other things become null and void. It's corrupt at the bottom. Because the book tells us, okay, oh, this greatest thing is so good. The last thing that he told us to add was what? Who remembers? Right? He said, start with virtue, Brotherly knowledge, kindness and charity. He said, what? Brotherly kindness and charity. Charity, right? And what do we know about charity? Love, right? Where's charity at? Is that 1 Corinthians 13 or 12? Uh, it's 13, uh, right? Four, 13 or 14. 13. 13? Give me, give me 1 Corinthians 13. We're going to come back to John 15 and, and wrap it up. So this is this is 1 Corinthians 13. Let's see, see if we, you know what I'm saying? See if y'all noticed something that, that we told about love. It's the one, it's the one that the, the Catholics, they be reading at the weddings. You know what I'm saying? Catholics break this thing out when it comes to a wedding now. Let me tell you something. They align this thing up. They be like, you know what I'm saying? Love is patient. Love is kind. You know what I'm saying? They always say it like with a little, you know what I'm saying? Love is patient. Love is kind. Right? Love does not seek its own. You know what I'm saying? They light your butt up with this one. Watch this though. Let me tell you the part that they never noticed. We all heard this millions of times. Let me tell you the part that nobody ever notices. This is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Give me verse 1. Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Right? And charity means love, y'all. So it, when he says, if I speak in tongues, he's talking about gifts, right? Because everybody want to have a gift. Everybody want to look special. Paul's trying to balance their ideas. Paul does this a lot. This is why people thought Paul contradicted because Paul was trying to bring balance to people. He has a, you have to imagine what Paul, he's, he's teaching a number of different levels of knowledge. It's some people that come from, from they Israelites, they understand the law. That's why in some places you'll see, I speak to those who understand the law, right? And then you got some people that don't understand the law. You got some people that's Gentiles. So he's speaking to different levels. And in speaking to those different levels, you have to find, okay, hey, Israelite, I get it that you know it, but what you know is not necessarily required of this Gentile. Why don't you relax? And he's Gentile, hey, man, listen, I get that you don't know, but you need to do at least these things, right? So he's trying to like kind of bring everything to an equal path to where he's, he has a message to where people are balanced. So that's something that you have to understand when you're reading Paul. But watch what he's saying here. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have no charity, I am nothing. Mm -hmm. Though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profits me nothing. Mm -hmm. Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity mm -hmm. haunteth not itself, is not puffed up, does not mm -hmm. behave itself unseemly, seeking not her own. Is not he says, seeking not her own. What else? Is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices. It, 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 it's a whoa, 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 whoa. Charity doesn't do what? Rejoices not in iniquity. Love does not rejoice in iniquity. Right? So that redefines, no matter how you look at it, what love is. Right? If iniquity is defined as transgression of the law, right? And we look at it and we have the law through my uh, Yahushua. Now, when we transgress, if I consider myself happy in transgression, that is not love. There is no way that I can say I'm adding brotherly kindness. If then I'm also sinning. So love require true love requires you to turn away from all sin. Right. You cannot be in iniquity and also love. 
Let's go back. This is uh, uh, John chapter 15. Let's try to close this out. We got to get Brother T to bed. I can keep him too long. Sure. Well, you know, like midnight here, you know, you guys lucky over there, you know. <laughs> I mean, I asked you, you know, if, if you didn't mind doing it a little earlier, you know, you have better things to do. You know, some friend you are. Woe is me. <laughs> <laughs> I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Uh huh. Planted me that bears not. What's the husbandman? Uh, like a gardener, the person that. What does the husbandman do? Takes care. Takes care of the field. Takes care of the fruits. What else do we do? Plants the seed. What else do we do? Take care of the, the whole vineyard. Huh? We look after the whole vineyard. And what else? When it's all said and done, what are you going to do? You're going to eat it. That's his. <gasps> all right? When it's all said and done, I'm coming back to this vine, and guess what I want? Some fruit. The whole purpose of me collecting all this, I mean, uh, taking care of this thing and pruning it and watering it, it's the fruit. If there is no fruit, let's see what happens. Keep going. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. And every branch he, that bears fruit, he prunes that it may grow, that it may bring forth more fruit. Mm -hmm. Now ye are clean through the Understand what that's that. saying. Oh, I love this thing. Understand what that's saying. He's saying, listen, there's nothing that he's not touching. Isn't it? He didn't give you no scenario where it's like, oh, this branch got some fruit on it. This branch don't got fruit on it. And this branch got a little bit of fruit on it. I'm only going to do the ones that got a little bit and no fruit. No, he said there's only two scenarios. You got fruit, I'm going to make sure you get more fruit. I'm going to prune you. Prune means I'm going to take away little imperfections, right, so that you can grow even more fruit. I don't want these imperfections to get in your way. What does that sound like if we make that practical? What is that, what is that saying? Right? I, I have some fruit. And then the husbandman is going to prune it. In other words, I'm taking away imperfections. Right? What does that look like practically? Graphs. You remember we talked about, we talked about, uh, we don't have to get it, but I think it's uh, John chapter seven. We talked about how Yahushua said, if you do the will of the father, you will know whether what I'm teaching is of God or not. And we talked about the concept of just take what you know apply that and the most high god will add to it right that's what he's saying here he's saying okay well you're doing something are right? you doing a little something i see you see something growing there all right well i'm gonna prune it i'm gonna prune it so that you make sure you got more fruit and that's a constant thing that's why he doesn't have he doesn't have any option where it's just like uh that one's good he didn't give us that option everything needs his touch you either you either gonna get chopped off I'm going to take away some imperfections and you're going to keep growing. You're going to keep growing and you're going to keep growing. Right. Until it's time that I'm going to collect all my fruit. But those are the options. Right. Those are the options. Don't put pressure on yourself to be perfect. He told us how to be perfect. It is possible to be perfect. Don't let nobody tell you it's impossible because the book told you and Yahushua told you, I think in the fifth chapter of Matthew, he told you this is how you be perfect. Right. He wouldn't tell you that if it wasn't possible, right? So it is possible. But the things that he's telling you, that he, get, he, he gave you practical information of what Peter just told you more so impractically. He just gave you, you know, um, values that you should have. Yahushua put those values into practice. So if you go home and you read Matthew 5 all the way through like 7, that is what he's doing. He's telling you the most extreme version. He's giving you perfection. This is how you stay nowhere near sin by doing these things. But if you look at the actions that he's telling you about, it is the practical version of what Peter is explaining, right? It, he's describing what it looks like to have virtue, knowledge, what it looks like to have temperance, patience, what it looks like to have godliness, brotherly kindness, and love, charity. I think that's all. I might have missed one, right? But he's giving you the things that, that he's giving you what it looks like, 
All right, keep going. This is uh, still in John chapter 15. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch mm -hmm. not bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can mm -hmm. you, except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me, that's you it. can do nothing. He said, without me, you can do nothing. So that's our, that's, that's our goal, right? We have to bear fruit. Tabernacles is about bringing in the harvest, not showing up empty. It's going to come a time when a man is ready to get his fruit. And if the fruit is there, we good. If it's not, if that, if that number get called, if that last trumpet go off and the fruit is not there, then we in a tough spot. Right? So make the calling and the election sure. That's all we got to do. Focus, 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 focus. Remove all distraction. Remove whatever you got to do. Make the calling and the election sure because it's getting late in the day. I heard that. Any questions? No. Oh, I bet you ain't got no darn questions. No. But you was over there taking notes? No. Yeah, I doubt it. What is coloring? Huh? You was writing what? What you was writing? You're writing pictures. Interesting. <laughs> you know, our, our people in ancient times used to write pictures. Yeah. Our letters were somewhat pictures. <laughs> no questions, though. No questions. Good study. I appreciate you, Sister Pamela. Praise y'all. Any any other questions? Got to no. get y'all. Did I did I do? No, no questions. Why y'all so happy about not having questions? Goodness <laughs> gracious. That's what I'm gonna take out. You know what I'm saying? You darn right. You ain't got no questions. I wouldn't like questions. <laughs> Dark saying. All right, let's go ahead and pray out then.